Question number one of this exercise says that which of the following statements are true and which of the following statements are false. We have to give reasons for the answers that we give. Statement one of this question says that only one line can pass through a single point. So let's have a figure on board. In this figure, let's take this point as O through which we can see there are more than one line that can pass through. Also, we know that we can draw infinite number of lines passing through this point O. So, we can say that the statement 1 of this question is false. Now, let's go on to the second statement of the question, which says, there are an infinite number of lines which pass through two distinct points. So, let's have a figure again on a board. Here in this figure, P and Q are two distinct points and as seen from the figure there is only one single line that can pass through these two points. Also according to axiom 5.1 that we have learned in this chapter, given any two distinct points there is a unique line that passes through them. So again we can say that statement 2 is also a false statement. So now let's go on to the third statement. The third statement of the question says that a terminated line can be produced indefinitely on both the sides. So let's have a figure on the board. Here P and Q are the two endpoints. So we can say that the line segment PQ is a terminated line segment. But we can extend this line segment or we can produce it from both the ends as the dotted lines show. Also according to postulate 2, a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. So we can say that the third statement in this question is a true statement. So the third statement is a true statement and the second statement was a false statement. So now let's go on to the fourth statement of this question which says if two circles are equal then their radii are equal. So we know that when two circles are equal, that means the two circles are congruent. That is, they coincide on each other. They overlap each other. So that would mean that their circumferences are equal. So by that we can write 2 pi r1, that is the circumference of one circle, to be equal to 2 pi r2, that is the circumference of the other circle. So 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled and we get R1 equals R2. So now that means that the radii of the two circles would be equal if two circles are equal. So we can say that the fourth statement of this question is true. Now the last part of this question, that is part 5, says in figure 5.9, which is this figure, if AB equals PQ and PQ equals XY, then AB will be equal to XY. So by transitivity law, we know that if A equals B and B equals C, then we can say that A equals C. So if that is applied here in this case, we see that AB equals PQ and PQ equals XY. Therefore, we can say that AB equals XY. So, the fifth statement of this question is true. To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.